everyone, I wanted to go through some new foundation launches today and just talk briefly about each of them and who they might be good for, what type of makeup wearer um, or skin type might like them. Um, obviously, I can't do a full massive review on each one in one video, so I'm going to be reviewing them in detail on my website starting this week over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm going to put the link to my website below, make sure you bookmark it and keep checking back or you can subscribe to the newsletter uh, or the daily email and that will just go straight through to your inbox so you won't miss it. Uh, I'm reviewing the ones, or I'm talking about the ones, that I've had most requests for um, and I've also got a couple of things I'm throwing into the mix for fun. This is the Temptu Air airbrushing machine which I have used to do my makeup just now and it was good fun, I really like it. And also a non-foundation, this is the Effaclar, Effaclar BB Blur from La Roche-Posay, which I've been using loads and I love it. And to me, it's as comprehensive in its kind of effect and coverage as any of the other foundations. So I thought, that's going in. Let's get started, shall we? And uh, let's start off with the YSL, what used to be Tante Touche Chiclat and is now Touche Chiclat Le Ton. And it's been uh, reformulated. You might be familiar with the original version of this, which was a very glowy, fresh-faced, lightweight makeup. Well, the feedback on that was that people wanted slightly more coverage and longevity. And so YSL have reformulated it and it does have more coverage and longevity. Um, but I think that they've retained that nice glow that it's always had. It looks very fresh without looking um, overly dewy. So for people that maybe struggle with a little bit of oiliness, it's fine for them. It's not going to look too shiny. And for people with dry skin, it doesn't, it's not matte or anything like that. So I think it's a nice all-rounder, this one. And you can still apply it in quite a sheer way if you use like a dampened makeup sponge or something like that, or just fingertips and really shear it out where you need it. Um, but for most people that want that little bit more coverage, then it's perfect and it's really nicely buildable. Then we have the um, Le Beige from Chanel. So many people have asked me about this one. This one, again, has that lovely healthy glow, but I think this one's got a much creamier um, texture. It's almost like a face cream texture really, whereas the uh, YSL is very liquid. You see that? That would that would roll off my hand if I let it. The coverage on the YSL is actually a bit more than the Le Beige. But the Le Beige has a very slightly juicier finish, I think. So, you know, whereas a lot of these foundations are a lip from within glow, like the YSL one is, um, so you don't really get that reflectiveness, like, not shimmer, but almost like you've got a sheen of oil on your skin that's reflecting the light. You don't get that so much. It's almost like a velvety finish, but you get this megawatt glow. Le Beige, I think, has slightly more of a surface glow rather than the glow from within. It's a beautiful, juicy texture. I've done a comparison, which goes up in the next couple of days, between this and the Velvet which is one of my most used foundations. They're quite similar. This has got slightly more coverage than that one. This one's glowier than that one. Um, but apart from that, I love them both, really. This, again, good for any skin type, I think. But if you had very oily or combination skin, then you might still prefer um, the Velvet, depending on how much coverage you want. This, I think, looks nicer on the dressing table than that one. That one's better for traveling packaging that one. So you know, make sure you check out my in-depth review of both of those. If you're oily, really really oily, then you can always use a primer that's made for oily skin and um, these will sit on top of that just fine. If you're very very oily though and you want something that's actively um, helping with oil control and that you want to stick all day but, but that feels nice and light and breathable. All of those feel very light on the skin. This feels even lighter. I'm completely wowed by this. The problem with it is it only comes in two shades, which is a massive, massive failing, um, really. And hopefully they're gonna rectify that really soon. Because also both shades are quite similar, so it's not even like one's 
very, very dark and the other one's very fair. They're both a kind of fairish medium. But the blurring technology that this has got in it, um, considering it's so lightweight, is just amazing. I'm gonna put my before and after pictures on the screen of this because I think that you'll be quite amazed. Um, as most people were that read the post, I'm gonna to link to the post below as well. It's just a really lovely, lovely product. Um, I was really surprised by it. I didn't really want to try it because it said oil absorbing and my skin's been slightly on the dry side and I was a bit worried about that. But, you know, I don't find it drying at all. I do prep my skin quite well with moisturiser. So if you've got dry, normal to dryish skin, then you can probably get away with it. But really, it is for oily skin. That's where it um, does its best work. Opposite end of the scale, though, and this is more for people with very dry skin, although mine's slightly dry and it works well, but I do feel it's very, very rich indeed. Um, I don't think this is quite launched yet, actually. This is the Giorgio Armani Maestro Glow, which you might have heard people talking about. It's the Nourishing Fusion Makeup by Phase Elixir. And it's very clever. If you've ever used Maestro before, you'll know that it's this amazingly lightweight liquid that you can't believe would ever do anything to your face, but you pop it on a few drops and it just looks amazing. Well, this one is a glow version. I find it to be a completely different product. It's not, it doesn't even feel like it's in the same range in a way, just because the effects of it are so rich and nourishing. Uh, it's a proper oil. And even if I put this on at nine o'clock in the morning, and go to take it off in the evening, I can still feel it on my skin. Some people won't like that feeling, but some people that really want to feel nourished by their makeup will really enjoy um, the oiliness. And it's very sexy. It's You know, sometimes when um, people do those beauty shoots in magazines and they've got the girl and she's by the pool and they've slicked back her hair and it's all wet and then they Put little they kind of like tap oil into the skin to make it look really sporty and sexy and gorgeous I feel that that's what this makeup does um, yeah so that's all of the foundations and they're pretty much suit all apart from the Armani which I wouldn't touch with a barge pole if I was oily or combination and the BB blur which I think is better for oily or combination and then we have the Tempt You uh, airbrushing machine, which I had good fun with. I was very worried that I was gonna spray it on the new carpet. It's basically a foundation cartridge slots in here, and then you turn it on, and then air's coming out there, and then you pull this trigger, but you get this beautiful, kind of perfect finish. Now, this isn't gonna be for everyone. It's a bit of a faff um, if you're used to just kind of getting your makeup and going like this. I quite like the fact you don't have to touch your face really. I mean, I did a little bit of blending like that and with a brush. Um, but if you love that airbrushed finish and you're really into doing your makeup properly, then this is um, worth giving a try. I think that probably in Space N, it's, it's exclusive to Space NK, but if you um, go to a store, I'm pretty sure they must have some kind of demo version they'll have that you can try. And you can also slot in different cartridges like um, bronzer and highlighter and blush and do that as well. So it's not, I like it. I mean, I've used airbrush machines before and I've had them used on me on shoots and they tend to be um, just a bit of a rigmarole. My friend Caroline Barnes, who's like a super makeup artist, um, she was the one that recommended this to me and she said, you've got to try it because I was like, oh no. I wouldn't go near something like that and she's been using it and thinks it's just amazing so um, yeah well worth going to have a little look at that so yeah foundations ahoy those were the ones that I was asked for so I appreciate there's not really anything on the lower end of the budget scale apart from the Effaclar um, so really I must get to grips with some of the newer foundation launches from um, non-luxury brands and do another video on those. So just give me a chance and I'll get around to that. If you've got any suggestions of things you want me to try, then put those in the comments below as well. And yeah, just keep an eye on my website and I will be doing before and afters for each of them 
and uh, a little lowdown of what I think as well. So if you're looking for a new foundation, then make sure you check those out. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you fancy giving this a like, then do. Make sure you're subscribed and then you get all the videos into your inbox. And I shall see you in the next video.